Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire, Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company, get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I knew the last video that I did about the arrest of the 15 year old in Newtown would not be the last video that I'd do on the subject. I didn't think it would be so soon. I didn't think it would involve the same police officer. And I didn't think it would have happened a day before this action original incident that I first covered. I really appreciate everybody that watched that last video. It's on nearly 60,000. On Twitter, it's also got about 50,000. So thank you to everyone that's done that to raise that awareness. And since then, because in the original video, I said he was suspended. I corrected myself in the following story, but he has now been suspended following the release of this footage in the Aston area of Birmingham, which is not very far at all from Newtown. And it shows the moment that the police throw this man on top of the police bunny and repeatedly punch him, the officer, after a suspected bicycle theft. The West Midlands uh, police officer was involved in the incident on Frederick Road in Aston on the 20th of April and he's now been suspended. He assaulted the boy in Newtown on the 21st. He's the same officer. The cyclist suffered bruising to his torso. He was innocent and he hadn't robbed any bicycle. He was doing permitted exercise while he was going for a bike ride. He claims that officers were informed at the scene that the stolen bike had been found. In any case, the bicycle was grey. The stolen machine was black. So they stopped a man on a bicycle. He didn't match the description. And they was also told the bike was totally different. And he was also told at the scene that they thought he had stolen had been found. So what reason did they have to even restrain this man? So this is a 44-year-old man that has lodged a complaint with a community activist called Desmond Jadu, acting on behalf of the cyclist. Mr. Jadu said the, he accused the police of racial discrimination, assault, false imprisonment and use of excessive and unjustified force. This man has been found guilty of riding his bicycle to take part in exercise, he says, which he had been told to do by the government. When it comes to the relationship with the Afro-Caribbean community, it is very strained in Birmingham, he says, and they continue to make it even worse with incidents like this. West Midlands Police said that it's a Professional Standards Commission has referred both incidents to the Independent Office for Police Conduct and has suspended the officer f uh, from duty. The cyclist from Aston has asked not for his name to not be revealed and he said that the man is of previous good character. He was subjected to a violent assault while cycling in a face mask and gloves to protect him from the coronavirus infection. He was stopped by a male and female officer on suspicion of riding a stolen bike, which was later described as not even looking like the bike. And they was also told it had been found. A six minute, 30 second video shows him being taken in both arms by the police, then pushed onto the bonnet. While being handcuffed, he appears to be punched four times in the right side of his stomach. He's also slammed against the bonnet. And this also shows the strength of this police officer. So, for example, in the other incident where it was a 15-year-old boy, look how strong this man is. So when he was using his force against this young man, did he really need to hit him and kick him in the face? They say that it's not clear in the video, but the man said that he was pepper sprayed. And to be honest, with this man's previous good character and this police officer's previous bad character, I'm more prone to believe the man who was assaulted. He said that passers-by actually bathed his face with water after he'd been sprayed in the face and at no time during the filming does the man appear to resist violently. The footage shows for itself, says the community activist Desmond. It's appalling footage and the police appear to have no other description for the fact that the person was riding a black bicycle, yet they decide to take him off the bike during COVID-19, attempt to remove his face mask and slam him against the bonnet. The individual concerned has told me that he does not want to speak publicly, he's very scared and he's been humiliated in public and he said that he'd done nothing wrong. The community activist also said he was concerned about the lack of protection that the officers have um, from coronavirus. Birmingham Council has clearly stated that the Afro-Caribbean community has a lot of health inequalities during this crisis and COVID-19 uh, related illnesses. The officer uh, took hold of the man and is clearly complying with the officer's advice with protective measures by wearing the garments. They was in close proximity to him and they did not wear any protective gear. So this is a very good point that we have to take note of is that the fact that police officers are not wearing protective clothing and we are.
The officer was filmed in an alleyway in Newtown the day after this attack took place. He was punching and kicking the officer. The police put on the website that this boy had elbowed the officer. But in this case, the police haven't tried to make any justification. So this officer has two complaints in two days. And everybody I'm talking to has told me that this guy has a reputation for this. He's very active in this area. So what are we going to do to prevent this from happening? Because this just creates the bad tension between the police and the community that we've been trying to avoid since the riots. With more examples emerging every day, this is the second example from this officer. But up in Yorkshire, PC Chris Birkinshaw has been dismissed for gross misconduct after he actually tried to cover up evidence and intimidate a police officer. Chris Birkinshaw had to do um, a video call where he had these gross misconduct appeal uh, inquiry done online so it's because of COVID-19 they couldn't do it inside the actual place where they, they usually do so they all had to do it online and it's the most I've never seen anything like it I actually want to see more like this I want to see these sort of inquiries done in this way where they actually do it online and most preferably publicly they said that in this case in West Yorkshire, an unacceptable breach of standards has been committed by this officer who otherwise had an impeccable record. Well, clearly not because he's been breached for gross misconduct. He had 15 years of experience in the force and he got into trouble with his officer who's called Sergeant Piggin. I'm not going to say anything. He attended the home address of a registered sex offender who's called Mr. A in March 2018. Mr. A was taken to Huddersfield Police Station and asked if he would agree to have his photograph taken for an internal newsletter to which he agreed. PC Birkinshaw understood that the photograph was not for a distribution, but on the 19th of March 2018, PC Birkinshaw's then partner, he showed it her and PC Birkinshaw was served with a Regulation 15 notice and an investigation was launched into what he did. Today's hearing showed that PC Birkinshaw panicked on receiving the notice on May the 2nd, 2019, and he drove to a colleague, a fellow police officer, PC Barker's home address, where his counsel, Sarah Barlow, admitted that he'd made a very stupid mistake by trying to get her to delete evidence. He said that he'd also been in a toxic relationship with his former wife, and he'd been served with a non molestation order, so it seems that he was harassing his wife as well. The authority's case is that PC Birkinshaw told PC Barker that he wanted to contact Sergeant Piggin and ask him to delete the photograph from his phone. The authority said that an aggravating feature of the case is that he caused PC Barker distress by trying to intimidate her. They said that she had done the right thing by contacting the Professional Standards Directorate of West Yorkshire Police. It is alleged that he made these requests to PC Barker and had intended to disrupt and potentially undermine an investigation that, that was going on into him. And this panel is the misconduct panel and they found PC Birkinshaw breached the standards of professional behaviour in relation to honesty, integrity and discreditable conduct. In mitigation, they said that he'd suffered serious mental health issues and this led to him being hospitalised in 2018 and he returned back to work in April 2019. So this story definitely highlights the dangers that obviously officers are going through in their personal lives that could then affect how they deal with people on the street. And at this same time, we have to be very careful that this doesn't escalate because we're seeing too many examples of this, especially during lockdown. So I want to hear what people have to say on this. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow us online at Scar City Studios and don't forget Get to check out our previous videos. Peace. I'm back with you. Thank you. Um, the hearing is now resumed. Uh, I think the audio recording has recommenced and it's 18.08. Thank you all uh, for your patience. Um, we've reached a decision uh, in, in respect of these misconduct proceedings and in reaching um, the decision in relation to the disciplinary outcome, uh, we have given due consideration to all of the evidence which has been placed before us, all of the information which we have received. We've considered PC Bergenshaw, your police record, um, evidence and mitigation presented on your behalf, character evidence. Um, we've considered the, the information we've received in relation to your medical background, um, and the relationship breakup which was occurring 
we've obviously also had to have regard to the nature of the allegations, the interests of the public, the interests of the police, and we've applied um, at, um, some considerable, after some considerable discussion, the sanctions guidance and worked our way through it in the suggested way. Um, we have reached the conclusion that the conduct is gross misconduct and that the only appropriate sanction is dismissal without notice. We have not, cannot reach the conclusion that uh, what occurred falls into the small residual category. We will, PC Birkinshaw, provide you with full reasons which you want to discuss uh, with Ms Barlow um, when you have the detail. Appreciate that you have had a long and difficult day and may not be in a position to take all of this in. Um, I think it's appropriate that you have the information in writing so that you can consider it and consider whatever steps you may want to take um, in the light of the decision. Can I thank you all for your patience, cooperation um, and assistance and help throughout. The time is now 18.11 and these